Hi, I'm Karen Hodgins, creator of Nifty Numbers and Math Medley Family Math Nights. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a lesson that I do with fifth graders called the perfect box. Now, the objective of the lesson is to get students to explore and discover the surface area and volume formulas for rectangular prisms. And the lesson meets Common Core State Standards for fifth grade measurement um, and data uh, three, four, and five. Okay, so the first thing that I do with students is ask them what this is. And of course, they're gonna say, well, it's a wooden cube. Um, okay, well, what else do you know about it? Well, it's made up of squares, six of them. Um, it has edges, where the edges meet. Um, those are the vertices. And then I say, well, in geometry, we also call this a solid. A solid is a three-dimensional object. So what are the three dimensions? We've got length, width, and height. So it's a three-dimensional object that has surface area and volume. And volume is the amount of space that an object takes up. Okay. We also call this a rectangular prism. So here's a rectangular prism. Here is another rectangular prism. Here is another rectangular prism. This is not a rectangular prism, nor is this a rectangular prism. And you can show them as many objects as you like. Um, but then I have them work in pairs to come up with the, um, or a definition for rectangular prism. So when we regroup, we write that definition they put in their journals. So a rectangular prism is a solid, okay, three-dimensional object, it's a solid that's made up of six faces, and those faces are all rectangles. Now we also talk about the prism part. A prism, if you take a cross-section, if I was to cut this um, rectangular prism into cross-sections like this, those cross sections would be identical. That's what makes it a prism. Now, if you want to, you can actually do something fun. You can take a um, rectangular prism that's a block of cheese, and you can cut the cross sections of that so that students can clearly see okay, that the cross sections right, are exactly the same. That makes it the prism. And the base of the prism, okay, this right here, um, describes what kind of uh, rectangle, what kind of prism it is. So this would be a rectangular prism, right, because this is a rectangle. And this one here that I showed earlier, this is actually a prism too, because if I cut the cross sections, they would all be identical, they'd be congruent. Um, and this would be a triangular prism. So we call this a cube earlier, okay? Um, it is also a rectangular prism. Now if you go back to two-dimensional geometry, when we were studying polygons, polygons, um, are two-dimensional polyhedrons are three-dimensional. So when we were back talking about polygons, um, we discovered that a square is a rectangle. Um, it fits the definition, two sets of parallel sides and right um, angles. Um, but it's a special kind of rectangle um, because all of its sides are the exact same length. So this cube is a special rectangular prism because all of the faces are made up of squares, so it fits both those categories. Okay, so the next thing I do is describe the project. They're gonna be taking on the role of senior designer at Packagings R Us, and their assignment is to bring in an object um, the next class period um, where they're going to, that they're gonna to use to design their box. Now the object needs to be um, larger than a golf ball, but smaller than the size of a large orange. And I would probably put that in the category of a large orange. Okay. Um, and, um, and then what they're going to do is um, design a box that may be sitting on a shelf, like, um, I don't know, in a, in a toy store or wherever, um, that, um, that will be the packaging for their object. They're gonna to have to take things into consideration like obviously the size of the object, but the fragility of the object as well. So if they come in with an object that's made out of glass, they're gonna to need to consider putting a, the size of that box in terms of adding extra packing material so that their object doesn't um, break. And the packing material that they're gonna get is tissue paper and one of their favorites, bubble wrap. So, um, so that's, um, that's the, uh, um, the project, and um, the fun and motivating thing about um, 
the project is that it gives students a real world application to the learning that they're going to be doing. Plus, they love the ownership that comes with being able to make decisions about the kind of box that they want to create within the parameters of the requirements, of course. Okay, so but before they can make their box, um, we need to talk about something called nets. Now, a net is a two-dimensional representation of a three-dimensional object. And this banner, this comes from our um, math medley, family math night kit. Um, this banner does a nice job of showing two dimensions here. You've got your length and your width. Okay, and this is a net because if I cut this out and I folded it, it would create a three-dimensional object that would be a cube. And so the third dimension then is height, length, width, and height. Now, I don't show this to the kids because I want them to create a net um, um, on their own. And, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But what I do show the kids is this. Um, okay, uh, who doesn't know and love Fruit Loops, right? So here is a, what shape is this? It's a rectangular prism, right? So if I cut this rectangular prism along certain edges and unfolded it, I would end up with a net, okay, of that three-dimensional object, that rectangular prism. Now it's easier for you to see on this side all of those wonderful rectangles that make up this rectangular prism. And then I show students this net, okay? and this net is made up of um, polygons, specifically um, hexagons and pentagons. And the hexagons and the pentagons are arranged in such a way that if you put all the edges together, okay, it would create a sphere, or what we know as a soccer ball. So, fun. Okay, so before they can make this, design their box, they need to have practice um, creating a rectangular prism. So they need to work with a partner and they need to create a cube, okay, out of graph paper. Um, I like to run my graph paper on tag board because it's a little bit thicker so that when students cut it out, it's much easier when they fold on the edges to then tape it together. Um, if, so if you can, run yours on tag board as well. If you can't, that's okay because you can take um, you can take regular, you know, paper, graph paper, and then just, um, tag board comes in sheets eight and a half by 11. You can just either glue it on to the tag board, or they can cut out their paper net, glue the paper net on here, and then cut it out. Okay, so there, there are some options there. So they need to work with their partner and create a net, um, a one by one by one, one inch by one inch by one inch. This is inch graph paper, by the way. Um, so an inch, by inch by inch um, net of what's going to turn out when they cut it out. They're not going to cut it out until um, they've created the net first, but um, it, what's going to create a, um, a cube, so a rectangular prism. So they work with their partners to do that. And there are several ways. One of the ways is right here on the banner. Um, here's another way to create a, a net, and there's, there's um, a few other ways as well. But they create this um, net, and then they fold it, and they tape it together, and I have them leave the lid open, okay? Um, so when this is done, they actually then just hold the lid down, and I ask them what the surface area of this cube is, and of course they count the faces, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, six what, I ask them. So six elephants, six m &Ms, no, six square inches, and it's really important. In fact, the Common Core State Standards talks about um, getting students to attend to precision, and that's what they're talking about. Getting students to use appropriate vocabulary and getting students to label um, appropriately too, um, and that would be six square inches, and it's real super easy to see. If you just open it up, you can count those six squares. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do, because their little um, cube is, is that tape like that, is I give everybody a um, cube. Okay, this is a wooden cube, and they fit that wooden cube right inside their box. Okay, and you can fold it up. Um, so now we talk about volume. Remember, volume is the amount of space that something takes up. So if this cube is one inch by one inch by one inch, then this cube has a volume of one cubic inch. So if this cube fits inside here beautifully, then the, the net that they created and the rectangular prism that they just created is one cubic inch, the volume. Okay, once they've had practice doing that, I give them a new assignment and they get to work with their partner again and create a net for a rectangular prism that is two inches by two inches by two inches. 
So when they've done that, it would look something like this. And then I have them again, fold it and tape it and leave that little lid open. Okay. And then we talk about the surface area and now they're going to do a little multiplication. They can count, okay, um, very visual there. But they have four, okay, um, four square inches here and six faces, so four times six is 24. That's 24 square inches. And then we can fill this, these are all cubic inches, right? So we can fill this with those cubes. And you can see right down there, there's the bottom, um, that's four cubic inches. And then of course we would add an additional four cubic inches and the volume of this rectangular prism or this cube is eight cubic inches. It fits beautifully in like that. Now that they've had practice with this, I'm going to um, pair them up again, let them work with their partner again, and this time they're going to get a um, particular box that I want, um, that they're gonna create. Okay, so you can see on here that I have seven different um, rectangular prisms. So I could have two to three groups of students working on the same rectangular prism and, and that's fine. Um, the paper that uh, they're gonna create their rectangular prisms on um, will not fit on here. So what I do is I buy at an office supply store um, large pads of graph paper. Um, I've also bought graph paper in rolls and uh, you can get these rolls at um, ETA, it used to be ETA Cuisinaire, it's now ETA Hand to Mind. And I buy them in large rolls like this, it's a little bit more economical. The difference though is that um, with the large pad, I can just take off very easily one sheet of paper per group. Um, this you're going to have to cut in advance, it's not that hard to do, but you just have to cut this in, in advance. The other thing is that um, after they finish cutting out their nets, I want them to put it back on that tag board um, or the um, cardstock. Um, so I buy this in bulk as well. This is 18 by 24 inches, and I buy it in boxes of 100. So um, students will um, then, once they, they cut out their paper net, they'll glue the net onto here. And let's talk about that gluing for a second too, um, because I tell kids, you know, um, is this, here, so let's say this was your net. Is this a good place to glue and cut out your net? Probably not, right? You're gonna have all of that space there that's wasted. So we're gonna try and use as much of this paper as we can. So wouldn't it be better to glue your net like over here, maybe, and then cut it out, um, and then we don't have to waste the whole piece of paper. So um, anyway, something that, believe it or not, some, not all students think about. So, okay, so they've got their assignment. Um, and they know which box they're gonna create, so they go and they create that. Oh, and the other thing that's super important is that I tell students to create their length and their width first on the paper, okay? Um, and we have reviewed um, the length and the width formula for the um, area of a rectangle um, because I want them get, to get used to that word formula because they're gonna be creating two new formulas in just a minute. Um, so they're, but they're very familiar with um, the length times width equals area formula for um, uh, uh, rectangles. So when they design their box, they need to keep in mind that they're gonna be adding height to this. So they have to place their length and their width on here in such a way where they can put that height on there still. If I created this and my height for my box was three inches, then I'm off the paper here. So I'm gonna to need to move that box over. So think about that as you are designing um, your net on your, on your paper. Okay. So everybody's designing um, their boxes, and then we um, um, collect the data. And, um, oh, they need to figure out obviously the volume of their box and uh, the surface area. And I've got cubes if they want to use the cubes. Um, and then we collect all of this data and then we look for patterns because we always look for patterns in math. And students will discover that to get the volume of their rectangular prism, they multiply the length times the width times the height that will give them the volume. So in this case, um, five times four is 20, um, times two is 40. So the volume would be 40 cubic inches, okay? Um, and so forth. And then um, their surface area. 
Okay, so now I have them create the formulas, and they just we just discussed the formula for the volume, and here it is. And then the formula for the surface area would be two times the length times the height plus the length times the width plus the width times the height. Now that's kind of a lot to look at, so I show students um, what that looks like. So here's my rectangular prism, and here's the length times the width, and there are two of those, right? Okay. Then there's the length times the height, and there are two of those as well. And then we've got, oops, the width times the height, and there are two of those as well. So it kind of makes that formula look a little bit more concrete. Okay, so that's the end of day one. On day two, they get to actually design their boxes. So day, day two, they come in with their, their object, and I have objects for students who forget. Um, I just want, um, my objects back at the end of the, the project. So, okay, so I hand out the graph paper. They each get some graph paper and um, they need to start designing their mocks and they need to keep in mind, like I said, those parameters, you know, the fragility of their object and so forth. And um, when I have approved their net, then, oh, when I've approved their net and their, their um, surface area and their volume, then I give them the um, tag board, the cardstock, and they can cut out their net and then put it on here, cut it out, and um, put it together. Um, they can design their boxes, so um, they can create a name for whatever object they have inside and design that, um, and uh, as if it was going to be on a shelf for somebody to, to purchase. Oh, and here's another, while I'm talking about that, here's another um, a project that my son did when he was studying Egypt. Um, he, we're going to cross-pollinate um, um, subjects here. This was a history project, and so he wrote on his cube um, facts about the government, um, the, ge the geography, culture, economics, and so forth. So you can have kids design something like this too, around certain parameters, and then um, and then have them create. I mean, it's, it, you know, or a book that they're reading, or something like that. So another way to tie that in. Okay, so. Um, so they have created their, their boxes. You can actually do a day three, an extension to this um, lesson um, where students, we've done a lot of geometry, we've done some data, um, some measurement, a little bit of number crunching. We do really bring the number crunching in on day three as an extension um, by having students do a cost analysis. And the PDF version, by the way, of this entire lesson is on our website, um, www.familymathlight.com, um, under the math resources section. So all of this, this graph and so forth, um, is on that PDF. Okay, so you could have kids do a cost analysis where I've given them um, the cost of 100 sheets of tag board, what it costs for the, the pad of graph paper, uh, the bubble, uh, bubble wrap and so forth, and then they need to figure out the individual cost for the paper, um, how many nets they can get on one piece of paper, because um, there somebody has placed an order for 100 of their objects. Okay, so they need to determine how much it's going to cost for them to package 100 of their objects. So tons of number crunching, and some it's good for them. So it's a really fun project. Um, kids love it, and like I said earlier, they like it because they get a ownership to parts of the project um, and I like it as a teacher because we get to uh, cover some important um, math concepts so have fun.